What's up, everyone? Uh, welcome back to another video. Um, so we are starting up a new series on hands-on machine learning with Python, as you can see in the title. So in this tutorial, we are going to be learning um, the basic concepts and warp in machine learning and what we will be doing is we will be learning all the mathematical models involved in machine learning and then we will be moving on to the implementation part. So, so the implementation part will consist of using the scikit-learn library as it makes things really easy for us. And what we will be doing is we will be using pandas, numpy and scikit-learn to implement all kinds of machine learning models that are there and then we will also be using, you know, using those algorithms to implement, uh, you know, to, to make some sort of projects. So, uh, without any further ado, let's begin. So, uh, so there's a lot of debate going on, you know, like what kind of, uh, ty what type of um, uh, uh, field should we should we choose in machine learning? So you you have my you might have, uh, have heard about these terms like the image processing, computer vision, or you, you might even heard about uh, the, the the natural language processing library, or you might even have heard about the in the, the text sentiment analysis. You might even have heard about the programs that could predict things. You might have you might have even heard about the programs that could play games themselves, or the programs that could drive the cars themselves. There are so many applications. So how do we choose a particular field to work on in machine learning? So in this video, we'll be covering all types of categories or or the types of machine learning involved, or or they are, you know there are the sub parts of machine learning. So we will be covering those things in uh, in our video, and then I will also be you know going through all of the topics that we will be covering like the implementation part and that mathematical part of those models that we will be going through in our further videos I'm going to cover those parts in this video so let's begin so uh, the first thing that we have here is that I've created a little um, chart here you can see uh, it defines the machine learning categories so our machine learning um, can be divided into three categories first one is supervised learning the second one is the unsupervised learning and the third one is the reinforcement learning so how do we um, understand each and every one of them? Well, I will be going through one by one, uh, you know, uh, on each type. And then, don't worry if you don't understand anything in this video, or you know, might you might you not understand a few things in this video, because each and every topic will be explained in a great detail as we move along to its implementation and explanation in our further videos. So, for now, let's just um, keep remembering these things as we move along, right? You, if you have a if you have if you have a paper and pencil, if you have a notebook around you, just go ahead and start writing this down. So, our first thing is the supervised learning. It's the first type of machine learning. So, what is supervised learning? In simple words, I've written here is that it's a lot. When you know when you have a large data set for a model to learn from. So, what is a model? First of all, what is a model? So, let's say we have a machine learning model. A model is simply an, a, a, simply a program that um, that is trained. On some sort of a data set you know you have a very large amount of data and you want to feed that data into that model and your model gets trained on that uh, on the data and it starts predicting or starts doing all of the cool stuff you wanted to do so this is a very common example of a supervised learning so you have a very large data set you feed it into the model and your model starts learning from the data it gets trained on the data and it starts Predicting stuff, or even classifying stuff, or even all of the mathematical, t uh, all of the mathematical strategies and models that are involved in the supervised learning. So, the things involved in the supervised learning um, is regression and classification. Now, don't get confused by seeing uh, as seeing at uh, these uh, two images that I've pasted out here, because both of these topics are very uh, important and essential in all of the machine learning problems that we will be solving and, and the applications that we will be implementing. So if you don't understand what is happening in this type of graph, um, actually you need to go ahead and make videos in each and every one of them. So don't get confused, don't get, um, you know, don't lose hope. The, so the first thing that we want to do is we need to understand what regression is. So regression in very simple terms is that we, we have a very big data set. We have a very big, uh, we, have, we have a very large data set. And what we need to do is we need to simply go ahead and, and plot each and every data point in our scatter plot. Like we have a very big graph paper and we want to plot each and every data point on that graph paper. And what we finally do is we simply go ahead and draw a line. 
So this line represents the relation or simply the shape of our data. So this line fits the best in our data. What this means is that we have a very large amount of data set. Let's say we have a data set of a stocks. So we kind of get the idea that the stocks are increasing, but we simply go ahead and plot the data of uh, of every day stock, the change that changes in the stock. We plot that uh, we plot each and every data point for each and every date in our scatter plot. And what we need to do is we need to simply go ahead and draw a line that fits best in this data. So what? Um, so don't worry if you don't understand this because I'm actually going to uh, explain each and everything as we move along to the implementation part of regression. But for now, just you need to you just need to get the idea of what regression is. So what we will do is we will simply go ahead and draw a line. And then what we can do is we can simply go ahead and put a new point on the line. And what we need to do is we simply just go, we just need to ask the question, right? If I have plotted this point, simply go ahead and predict something for me. So let's say it's, a, it's, it's uh, let's say we are considering an example of a stock price. What we will do is we'll simply go ahead and draw a line for the stock price. We'll put up line, we'll put a point for a particular date and it will simply go ahead and predict the stock, the, the stock for that day and there could be numerous examples in this uh, in this type of problem where we need to use regression so in simple words the places where we need, we, we need to use regression is where we need to predict something right so there are uh, examples that I have written down here the first thing is the retail sales the prediction of the number of staff the prediction of stock prices again the, the example that I told you the weather prediction so we have a, like a very big data set of weathers of different dates and let's say we have a data set of two years and what we need to do is we need to predict the weather for tomorrow so we can simply go ahead and give the date and it will simply predict something for us so these are like the applications or simply the examples of regression so you just need to get the overview and as we move along in the implementation part we will be doing this I promise you will be doing this all right so in our next topic of uh, supervised learning comes classification so uh, in order to you know explain classification very simply I've created this um, little um, step diagram so you can see the first step in classification is we need to go ahead and train our data so before we even understand this uh, I'm gonna tell you a very simple definition of what classification is so we have a very big um, data set of um, different classes now these classes can be considered as the categories so let's say I have um, I have mangoes, apples, and bananas. So now you can kind of uh, use your intelligence, use your brain to understand that this type of data could be classified as a fruit. So this is a fruit class, right? And let's say you have another data which has like um, triangle, square, rectangle. So this could be classified as the shape, right? So we have now we now have two classes: the shape and uh, the fruits. So what now we need to do is we need to simply go ahead and introduce a new object into this data. So now what our program needs to do is, is our program needs to you know guess or simply classify this new object you know uh, whether to which which, uh, which class this object belongs to. Let's say this new object was uh, was a pineapple. So how does our program determine that this pineapple obviously we know that this pineapple belongs to the fruit class but how does our program determine that this pineapple actually belongs to the fruit class. So in order to do this what we do now you can now you can actually go ahead and look at this um, step diagram that I've drawn. What we need to do is we need to introduce, we need to actually go ahead and feed our programmers with a lot of examples. Like you know this uh, this uh, this is apple and this has this shape or you know this has this attributes. That's why it belongs to the fruit class. So we have mango. It it is like this. You know all the attributes of the mangoes and, and then it belongs to the fruit. Uh, it belongs to the fruit class. And then we simply go ahead and feed in a lot of examples. And similarly, we do the same thing for the shape class. Now our algorithm is trained. So the next thing we need to do is we need to test this. So what we do is we simply go ahead and test the accuracy of our data, of our data. You know whether it's perfectly classified or not, whether there's any problem remaining in our um, in our training or not. We simply validate that. And then what we do is we simply ask the question. Let's say we simply go go ahead and introduce a new type of object and this is where our algorithm is finally finally tested for its accuracy you know whether it actually gives the right answer so if I give the pineapple it should give me the answer fruit because it belongs to the fruit class why because it was trained on the last data set as you already have uh, as I've already told you 
that classification is a type of uh, supervised learning. So what it needs, to, what it needs is a human supervision or simply a large data set from which it ne from which it learns, right? So if you now understand, you now know what classification is, what regression is. You know, you got a basic overview. So now we can move on to the next part, which is the super unsupervised learning. So in supervised learning, we needed a human supervision. In unsupervised learning, we don't need a human supervision. In simple words, but uh, what do we really mean by unsupervised learning? So, let's say we have a data set, and we don't have a data set. Let's say we have, have a, we have a program, and what our program needs to do is it needs to learn from the environment because it doesn't have the human supervision. It doesn't have someone to provide the data. It doesn't have examples, the previous examples from which it could learn from. So what does our program do in this type of situation? So the first thing what, what, what we need to learn are there are different methods um, involved in unsupervised learning. So the first thing is the anomaly detection. Now what is anomaly detection? Let's say, um, um, I'm going to give you a very simple example. So uh, this could be an example of, you know, you're sitting in a, you're sitting in a bank and then, you know, uh, suddenly a thief comes in and he simply goes ahead and breaks the glasses and strikes to steal the money, you know. So what uh, this type of uh, uh, this is some sort of anomaly, right? This is a strange behavior. So uh, what our program does is it is the similar thing. So what our program notices if there is a strange behavior in the data. So you can see that the, uh, in this diagram, you can see that I have created this uh, diagram here. What it shows is that we have a sequence of data that's going on. We don't uh, we, our program doesn't notice any strange behavior, but suddenly there's a rise. Now this uh, this rise. Is something that our program can learn from you know there's an, this is an anomaly so this anomaly could work as the new data as, as, as something our program can learn from so what it does it simply goes ahead and runs in the environment and looks for any anomaly that might be there any strange thing that might be there and then it will detect that type of anomaly and start learning the next type of technique is here involves the dimensional dimensional reduction and what dimensional reduction is that our program, let's say, we want to train our uh, train our algorithm in a three-dimensional data set. And what a three-dimensional data set is, like, let's consider it as a game, or let's say, let's consider this as an image which has an RGB frames. Like there's a red there's a red frame, there's a green frame, there's a blue frame. We've divided this into three dimensions, and our program needs to train this. So uh, the the processing for that type of dimension becomes very hard. So in what our unsupervised learning strategy will do is it will simply go ahead and reduce the number of dimensions so that it can easily learn from those um, so it can learn so it has to do the lesser work to learn from that three dimension what it will do is simply go ahead and and you know it, it will simply remove the, un, the the useless dimension and it will start training on the two dimensional data or even remove the second dimension to start training on the one dimensional data that could be a list right and don't uh, get confused uh, by seeing this diagram here this diagram is a little bit advanced here because here you can see that there's a concept called the principal component analysis which we will also be covering in our further videos now that concept involves um, you know how we actually go ahead and divide a 3d data set into 2d data set how we convert a 3d data set into 2d data set just to get the specific patterns and work on those specific patterns and we, we are going to be learning about that for now you just know what dimension reduction is but dimension reduction is you simply go ahead and reduce the dimensions to learn from the data all right now that's th third part and I feel like why I actually kept this in the very la in, in the very last was I wanted to you know explain this in a very great detail because this concept the clustering concept is a very important concept and from my machine learning experience from all the projects I've worked on I know clustering is something that you will be using a lot in a lot of projects so what we need to do is we need to actually go ahead and understand our data in unsupervised learning environment in supervised learning environment, we learned that classification can be used to classify data. But what if we wanted wanted to classify data, or even learn, what, you know, whether which, uh, you know, whether this type of data belongs to a particular class? What will it, what will we do if we don't have the previous examples? Because in in our previous strategy, which was supervised learning, we had the examples to learn from. Our program had the examples to learn from. But how does our program learn when it doesn't have examples? So this is where the clustering clustering comes in. So the first thing is we simply go ahead and let's say our program is work, was running and we introduce this this type of data. So we, it, it has a, like a lot of dots, like this is a scatter plot. 
And now what our program does, it simply goes ahead and it studies this pattern. What it will do, it will simply go ahead and study the pattern. Like let's say there were multiple shapes, rectangle, triangle. So our program will learn that you know this pattern kind of looks like there are similar attributes that belong to a similar class. So it will study those patterns. It will simply identify the similarities between those patterns. So there, there might be similarities, there might be the stroke width. So it can actually look at the stroke width of the shapes and determine that there is a similarity between those shapes. Or it might even look at the, uh, at the fruits and determine the similarities based on some of the attributes of those fruits. And go ahead and what it will do finally is it will group them into the classes. So as you can see this strategy is where it doesn't know anything from previous data. What it will do is it will run, it will run on runtime and it will simply classify your data on runtime. So this is clustering and uh, I hope I was not going really fast in this video but uh, what I just did is, is I just covered all of the basics of um, what we will be doing um, in our further videos. And one thing I, all, I haven't covered here is the reinforcement learning. And why I haven't covered this, covered this uh, this type of learning is because I wanted to cover this in a very separate video because this involves a lot of explanation. It has a very separate explanation, and I will be covering this type of uh, this 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 category in further videos when I am done with these two types. All right. So I hope you uh, I hope you like this video. I hope you you kind of got the overview. And in our next video, we will learn we will be learning about the data processing and. The next video will also be will be about the theoretical concepts involved in processing our data before we can feed it into our machine learning uh, uh, model. For now, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Adios.